Good morning, everybody. It is your daily crypto news, and it's Tuesday, July 16, 2024. My name is Matt, and, well, I'm on the West Coast. So if you're waking up on the East Coast and you're wondering where your daily crypto news is and it's already noon, well, it's early for me, and I was just lollygagging around the room preparing for this show, not realizing that time was whisking by over on the East Coast. Well, shame on me. We'll try to fix that for tomorrow. Anyway, let's get into today's news. Everybody has the same question. Well, first, everybody knows, I hope everybody knows, that Ohio's United States Senator J.D. Vance is now the VP running mate for Donald Trump. And if you're in the crypto community, you're wondering, is he going to be a good thing or a bad thing for Bitcoin? So how does J.D. Vance stack up when it comes to crypto? The fact is, is that JD's political identity has shifted quite a bit over the years. He went from being a Trump hater in like 2016, where he said Trump is America's Hitler, to now being one of the most loyal devotees of Donald Trump and being the VP pick. But in crypto, he's been more steady. In 2021, Vance disclosed on his FEC reports that he was holding anywhere between $100,000 and $250,000 worth of Bitcoin. And this is why he was running for Senate. In 2023, in his first year in the Senate, Vance introduced a bill that sought to shield crypto firms from harsh federal regulatory oversight. And also Vance, he made sure that he seized the opportunity to lambast the United States Securities and Exchange Commission for an embarrassing Twitter hack on the eve of the approval of the Bitcoin spot ETF. And lastly, just a couple weeks ago, he began circulating a draft legislation that would overhaul how federal agencies regulate crypto in a manner described as a very industry friendly move. So it looks like if Donald Trump, JD Vance are both saying, hey, they're going to be the protectors of the crypto industry. Maybe we have the first time in American history that a presidential ticket has embraced Bitcoin. We will see because there is skepticism to this. Arthur Hayes, he released an op-ed saying that you shouldn't put faith into Donald Trump, that he is going to protect crypto and advocate for Bitcoin. Honestly, I haven't seen any proof of that. Besides him using Ethereum and NFTs and making money off of the crypto industry, I have not seen any legislation that has come out to protect the industry, but I also haven't seen any legislation against. To be honest with you, I think that he's pretty neutral and I think that we should all be pretty neutral until we find any kind of movement or any legislation that is pro-crypto from a Trump administration. Some Mt. Gox creditors are expected to receive their repayments of their Bitcoin from the infamous Mt. Gox hack that happened 10 years ago, and they should be receiving that repayment in about 7 to 14 days. And this is coming from an email from Kraken. Kraken is one of the five crypto exchanges to facilitate distribution of Bitcoin to the creditors. The email that I just mentioned has been going around on Twitter and then confirmed it to be true. They said that we have successfully received creditor funds, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, from the Mt. Gox trustee. Please anticipate 7 to 14 days for the funds to be credited to your account. Well, obviously, if you get a big chunk of Bitcoin, Bitcoin might go down off of fears that people will sell. Bitcoin took a dip right after they received the $2.8 billion into a cold wallet. That same wallet later made a $3 billion transfer to an unidentified wallet. Bitcoin's on the move. And if you are somebody who's been waiting for your Bitcoin from the Mt. Gox hack, 7 to 14 days more, and then you'll be there. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, he reiterated his belief in Bitcoin on Monday on the morning show Squawk on the Street on CNBC. He said things like, I'm a major believer that there's a role for Bitcoin in portfolios. And he added that it's one of the asset classes that we look at. He continued to say it's an instrument that you invest in when you're frightened and you have an opportunity to invest in something that is outside your country's control. Let's take a listen to the rest of this interview. It's only about two and a half minutes long, but you'll see where one of the biggest and most powerful CEOs in the country, control of trillions of dollars and where his head's at. Can we say when moon? I, I know uh, you have been a leader in willing to embrace crypto. You yeah. have made it so that people can be in Bitcoin. We hear that you are thinking about Ethereum. These are incredible things. How, now, BlackRock is not known as a uh, 
a gunslinger by any means. So you obviously must believe that this may be as an alternative. Is this an alternative uh, in order to be able, because of the a deficit, maybe something long term people should have? Absolutely. Um, as you know, I was a skeptic. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I was a proud skeptic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I studied it, learned about it, and I came away saying, okay, you know, my opinion five years ago was wrong. Here's my opinion today. This is what I believe in today. I believe the opportunity today. I believe Bitcoin is legitimate. I'm not trying to say there's not misuses like everything else, but it is a legitimate financial instrument that allows you to have maybe uncorrelated, non-correlated type of returns. I believe it is an instrument that you invest in when you're more frightened, though. It is an instrument when you believe that co countries are debasing their currency, de debasing their currency by excess deficits, and some countries are. I believe we have um, countries where you're frightened of your everyday existence and have an opportunity to invest in, in a, a something that is outside your country's uh, you know, control, then you can have more financial control. And so I'm a, a major believer that there is a role for Bitcoin in, in portfolios. I believe you're going to see that as, an, as one of the asset classes that we all look at. I look at it as digital gold, as I said before, and I do believe there's a, a, there's a, there's a real need for everyone to look at it as, as one alternative to, I would say, the optimism that I have in the world. If you want to hedge hope, Bitcoin is not a, an instrument for hope unless you're hopeful you're going to make a lot of money on it. <laughs> but it, I, I look at it as a vehicle in which you're expressing your, your financial acumen in something that you're more frightened of the world, you're more frightened of your existence. And I believe there's a great industrial use for it. And I, and I think a lot of people are missing that. I couldn't agree more. I changed my mind about it when you did. You would have been my thinking. It was like, uh-uh, you don't believe it. So I can't believe it. I want to thank Larry Fink for the message of optimism. And finally, in my favorite news of the day, South Korea just moved to delay its 20% tax on crypto profits. See, what was going on is they proposed a new tax that would require investors to pay 20% on any gains exceeding 2.5 million won or only $1,800. Well, there's been a lot of debate over this. Why? Because it's in stark contracts with the capital gains tax already in South Korea that applies to trading stocks. That tax only applies to 50 million won, or around $36,000, not $1,800. So they're like, hey, this is kind of unfair. Well, the proposed tax, the Korean government says, is part of a broader suite of regulatory measures aimed at curbing potential excess and ensuring market stability. Well, everybody called BS on that, and that's kind of why they're going to delay or proposing to delay this until 2028, which I think that a proposal to delay it to 2028 is also a reason and an excuse and an opportunity to rethink this whole plan. Now, I know what you're thinking of, those crypto prices. Let's get into them. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And the time is 9.11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time. I'm sorry, East Coast. <laughs> it's almost, by the time this is out, it's going to be 1 o'clock over there. Anyway, Fear Greed is at 57. We're neutral. Bitcoin is sitting at $64,648, up 2.6% in 24, or 12.3 in 7. Ethereum is at $3,471, up 3% in 24, or 13% in 7. Teller's number 3, Binance is at 575, up 0.3% in 24, or 11.4 in 7. And Solana is at 160, up 4.7%, or 14.2 in 7. All right off the top 10, we have USDC. XRP is up 11.6% at 58.5 cents or 35.8 percent in seven ton coins at seven dollars and 39 cents down almost a percent still up on the week dogecoin is at 12.5 cents up six percent in 24 almost 17 percent in seven and cardano is at 44.5 cents up 2.4 percent in 24 almost 20 percent in seven the total market cap is up 3.2 percent at 2.38 trillion a Bitcoin dominance of 53.8 and an ETH dominance of 17.6. That's our show. My name is Matt. I'm on the West Coast. Sorry, you're going to have late shows because I am not getting a show out by 6 a.m. West Coast Pacific time. So East Coast, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to abandon you. But don't worry. I'll be back in Ohio next week. 
But until then, happy hodling, everyone. <laughs>